Hey Chris. Hey Nick, good another, to see you. Another year, another tall yard. Oh indeed, yeah, here we are for, well I think this is the second gear fest that I've been to but it's a lot bigger now and it's, uh, it's feeling good. We've got a good nice sunny day out there, it's That's feeling good here, is, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So um, we haven't seen this yet but no, the, uh, no, the this innovation is, yeah. FL so, key. Yeah, so this is the FL key. Um, now this is the 49, so recently we've um, increased the range. We had a Mini and a 37 note. Um, but we got one of the biggest questions we got asked is, well, can we have a 49 and a 61 note? So um, it made sense for us to do that. And here is the FL, FL key 49. Now, in terms of kind of what this has got, it's pretty much the same kind of level of control with a few more features added in there as the 37 note. But of course, we've got a bit more real estate. We've got more keys and a bit more space. So of course, we can bring the, uh, the faders into play as well now. So really, it's just a development on the range of the FL key, which has been actually been it's been a really really good product for us because of course the you know the the amount of uh, you know sort of well the amount of FL studio users out there is huge. And it's interesting because a lot of people think it's you know not not necessarily pro, but yeah. there are a lot of people there's who use a, it. A lot, lot of, of and and you know really um, kind of obsessive users as well. You know people if you you know if you're an FL studio user, you're an FL studio user. You know and. With good reason. I mean, you know, it's not the software that I've been using all my life, but when I've kind of had to go down the road of learning FL Studio to get to grips with the FL key, there's some really impressive stuff in there. It's really and of powerful. course, still one of the only remaining uh, uh, DAWs you can buy rather than subscribe Absolutely. to. Absolutely. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Absolutely. So anyway, yeah. And, and also the thing to say about the FL key, of course, is that there is no other keyboard based dedicated controller for FL Studio. Uh, does this just control FL Studio or will Absolutely. it do other stuff I mean, the, well? the more eagle-eyed, or not even that eagle-eyed, <laughs> the viewers will, will see there's quite a big similarity with the FL key and the launch key. So, you know, essentially hardware-wise, you know, we, we're using the same, uh, same stuff, but actually inside is slightly different firmware and a, a dedicated script-level control over FL Studio. So, I mean, we've got FL Studio here, uh, just on a demo version. But one of the things that we've got with FL uh, Key, for example, is, you know, we, FL Studio is based around the channel rack, the notion of the channel rack. And we can, you know, select our parts and stuff here in the channel rack mode. But if I go to Sequencer, I can move up and down on the channel rack here with these. And now, if I hit play, you see that's running. But I have, essentially, hardware access to the uh, channel rack the sequencer right, in there. Yeah. Um, and again, you know, this is actually a really lovely layout, specifically, you know, if you're familiar with Circuit or even the Launchpad Pro sequencer, you know, it's a very similar kind of workflow, but of course it's, you know, directly related into, um, into FL Studio software. And it just, again, it just sort of takes away, I mean, I'm always a big fan of controller keyboards anyway, because it's taking away that single point of contact with the mouse, but you're getting a, a really, a really kind of profound kind of level of control over the software with it. So, I mean, that's one of the pages there, um, the sequencer page, but we've got a whole load of other stuff as well. In fact, one of the things that has been added to the, um, uh, to the FL key um, since the 49 and 61 have come along is the ability to add and clone patterns as well. So to add a new pattern, you just press shift, new pattern, and now we have a totally blank pattern so we can you know, build another little sequence up there and kind of just quickly add some stuff in from the hardware, I mean, just randomly <laughs> tapping, uh, tapping pads there. But that's, that's a really nice function because, again, it takes away that need to go back to the trackpad or mouse to actually create a new pattern to, to do that. So yeah, I mean, uh, FL Studio is sort of renowned for the speed of yeah, workflow absolutely. and how yeah. quickly it can run. Yeah. Uh, you I mean, get ideas up, down, right? It, that's it. I mean, they, they do say it's the quickest way for, well, from ideas to, to sound. I, I can't remember the, the strap line that they've got, but they, have, they, they actually do, you know, do say that about it. Very quick and easy piece of software. So, um, I mean, yeah, so we've got that kind of stuff. Of course, we've got the, the, the faders, and it's all instantly, instantly mapped. The script is all there. We can you know, bank across to all the various different uh, areas. Um, and it's just, again, it's just giving you that sort of hands-on access into the software and just opening it all up for you. So the key bed, is it in uh, velocity, after touch, what's, what's uh, it It's velocity sensitive, of course. Um, we don't have after touch on here, but, you know, we've got the velocity on there. And um, there are some interesting functions on here. These are kind of similar things that you would find, for example, on the launch key. Uh, but we've got kind of, you know, the fixed chord stuff as well. So we can just add a fixed chord in there and, you know, sort of build a chord up, single finger chord. Um, on the launch key, we've got an arpeggiator. 
Uh, but in FL Studio, we decided against that after a bit of consultation with users, simply because there's an arpeggiator on every single track anyway. And so to put that into the hardware is a bit less value. But what we do have is a note repeat. So you know, on the note repeat, if I go to instrument here, now I can just use that as a kind of a note repeater. And if I press shift in that, I've got access to the sort of uh, resolutions for the note repeat. So you can kind of you know, do your sort of ratcheting sort of stuff here as well with ah, that. Ah, OK. So it's all, you know, it's all there under, under your fingertips with it. Um, we've also got, of course, scale mode here as well. And scale mode, again, if I press shift and scale, we've got eight different scales to choose from. You can check, change your root notes with the, um, with the keys here. And again, this is sort of similar kind of layout to the, the launch key, but really useful, again, uh, for FL, uh, FL Studio users too. Um, also, yes, yeah, so we've also got our, um, our pads here as well. We've got scale chord, which gives us standard triads, sevenths, ninths, and then thirteenths, all in scale, in key. Um, and uh, then we've got user chords as well. So I can just hold down a pad, build up a little chord there, and I've got that chord then build uh, up another neat. chord there. So, you know, you've got your own little kind of area for developing chords. So, you know, all, all really nice stuff. Uh, the faders themselves, they can be used to control, of course, volume here. Um, but if I open up the, uh, let's see, have I got the flex machine? I think it's this one. Here we go, flex machine. So if I then switch to uh, plug-in control, now, yeah, instantly I can control over the control the um, yeah the parameters within that synthesizer. Oh, so as it's well. all sort of pretty well pre-made. Uh, is there any custom? Yeah. Is there any customization that the user can do? Uh, there is customization well. on here. We have got custom oh, modes on here as well. So for example, on the pads, you can go to custom mode now. This is just set up at the minute with a simple scale uh, outline. What's this one? Again, these are just drum pads here. But using Novation Components software, you can, of course, um, you know, create your own custom mappings. Custom mappings can be a combination of CCs, program change, note uh, messages, um, all that kind of stuff. But in more recent times as well, we've got uh, ASCII, uh, a QWERTY keyboard strokes oh, in there neat. as well. So you can shortcut. So you, yeah. And that, uh, for me, I think that's a really big advantage. That gives you a lot of um, scope for things like, you know, add a new track, add a new, you know, add a new instrument, all that sort of stuff. It's really, really quite nice to work with. Do the pads um, have pressure or is it just velocity for the pads? Uh, I think, right, I think we do have pressure on these. Um, but I don't know if that's used directly in with the um, uh, with FL Studio. Um, but certainly, you know, the pad the, the pad mats that we use are, you know, um, well, to, yeah, well, they, well, they do have that for sure. Yeah. So I mean, this is the FL Studio mm. uh, FL key. Yeah. I mean, can you flat? You know, can you flip your firmware between uh -huh. versions? Uh, no, you can't. No, they, that's one thing that we can't do. So. And that's actually it's quite an important thing to say, I guess. If you're an FL Studio user, this is the this is the right controller to get. But if you're using any any other door, so Ableton, Cubase, Logic, all all of the others, really the the launch key is that's the one for um, yeah for, for, for those for those users. Um, we wanted to do something dedicated for the FL Studio user because you know there's there's not that many controllers at all out there. In fact, I don't think there are any others in manufacture. It, it, it being manufactured just at the moment. I mean, there have been other uh, controllers in the past, but certainly not keyboard-based as well. Right. So, yeah, and, and, and as you say, you know, there's such, um, there's such a large cohort of people using the software, but nothing dedicated for those guys to use. It makes sense that this is very much focused on that. Um, but the launch key, of course, you know, very similar layout, very similar design, but that's opened for pretty much all of the, um, yeah, all of the other DAWs. So what's the price on this guy, do you know? Um, that's a good question. I would check with your local retail. <laughs> nice swerve. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. I mean, I could talk about the products, but I often get asked about prices, and that's something I often forget to kind of look up. But no, yeah, no. I mean, I, yeah. I'll check, put check it in. Yeah. I'll, I'll put some text to cover your embarrassment. Yeah. I mean, it wouldn't be a Sonic State uh, a video with myself without me sort of forgetting one thing, of course, you know, so. <laughs> Chris, thank, thanks ever so much. No problem. Good to see you, Nick. Thanks.